over here at Volkswagen now. You can see the new ID7. Definitely can't wait to hear about the specs. It's very much MEB. You can see rear drums, front discs, probably the same 78 kilowatt hour usable, 82 gross plus or minus in there. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. You join me and LB and Alyssa. We are in the boring tunnel right now. We're in the Las Vegas loop in a Tesla Model Y and we are just cruising from the Resorts World Hotel uh, here in Las Vegas over to the convention center. I thought this would be a great way to start the video. This is sort of the day before even the media previews start and we have special access to take you on a full tour of everyone getting set up, all the crazy electric cars that you're gonna see, charging hardware, companies that I bet you've never heard of. There's cars from all around the world here. It's just gonna be insane. CES is truly gonna be insane this year and I wanted to kick it off by taking you on a full tour. I mean, I wanna go explore and see all these things and let's go do that together, our first look through. So expect a pretty long video, just a overwhelming amount of stuff will be flying at you here. And we've arrived here at the uh, Vegas Loop drop-off point. Thank you for the ride. No problem. And uh, yeah, really great. They run Model Ys, couple Model Xs as well. There's two different lines right now, I think. Two separate lines. Two yeah. separate lines. We've already filmed a video on the other line. Take a look at that from last year. And uh, thanks for the ride. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So a huge thanks to LB for driving us. Turns out to be a viewer. Always funny to run into viewers doing cool stuff around. Uh, already have met so many of you and we've just been here a couple hours who have watched the videos. So a huge thanks. If I see you at the show, come and say, hey, let's talk about uh, cars and tech. That's why we are here. So. CES is always like one of the craziest, biggest, most overwhelming events of the year. Uh, and this one I think is gonna just one up everything before. Um, West Hall North Lobby is where we're gonna start. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in here, specifically Magna, you guys know they're one of our sponsors. They have a massive booth there. I'll be doing some live streaming with them, uh, showcasing some of their technology uh, coming up. That electric pickup truck that I drove that they built uh, that's here on display, covered in mud. It's awesome, super cool, showcasing their electric motor architecture. But just a lot of stuff to see. So if you pan over here to the right, you'll see the whole convention center. This is just one side of it. There's even a whole bunch more on the other side. So CES is about to get totally crazy. Um, wanna make a quick note about the boring loops. It's actually free for CES participants to ride in the boring tunnels. They have 100 Teslas, roughly. They charge them to full which I thought was a little bit odd because they're not doing a huge range. We saw the Model X we rode in earlier was getting about 430 watt hour per mile, but that's a lot of idling around. So uh, should have checked the efficiency in the Model Y, but also surprised they're doing 100% charges on those cars. Um, yeah, which I was not totally expecting. And here we go, heading into the first entrance. They let us in, which is great. And already we're starting off very EV focused. Blink is right here. We know Blink, of course, uh, produces uh, or is a charge point operator, one of the networks that we cover. If you haven't yet subscribed or followed, rate your charge on Twitter. We cover the landscape of DC fast charging. It's a new Twitter page we started and it's just blowing up. It's awesome. If you're out charging, tag rate your charge. Blink is here. I see they brought over a DC fast charger. It looks like some level two stuff as well. Maybe talking about some of their back end network operations, which is cool. Um, so much stuff to get into. Vestel. These guys actually produce some um, EV charging equipment as well. So let's just take a quick stroll past here. A lot of this is popular in other markets, not so much in America. Um, my plan is just to walk into booths until they kick us out. So um, you can see over here some level two charging equipment, maybe 22 kilowatt. Yep, 22 kilowatt AC charging. You can see the Phoenix Contact HPC cables. Love those here on some DC fast charging equipment. Some other level twos. Take a look over here. Um, this is more, it looks like adapted for the US market, J1772 connectors, home charging. This is a company that uh, we haven't really done anything with, don't know anything about Vestel and uh, should maybe try out some of their chargers sometime. And if you guys take a look up over here, you'll see the Autel sign here. We know those guys pretty well. We've done some integration, some ads with them. My dad has an Autel charger. Colton has an Autel charger, the level two units. Really, really like their units. Uh, very high power, 50 amp actually, which is interesting. Uh, normally they go up to 48, but these will go 50 amp. You do have to wire it to a 70 amp circuit at that point. Um, the cable isn't the best, but everything else is pretty good. Looks like they brought along some of their DC hardware as well. It looks like they might be using the Rima 350 amp air-cooled cables here. Those look pretty interesting. 
Um, also seeing a few different cable options on these units with different displays. If you look over here to the left, you'll see all of those. They're very odd. And take a look at this, a VinFast driving here right in front of us. CES is just insane. And again, this is the full setup here. So let's, let's let this VinFast drive past. This is cool. Um, I wish I knew the numbers, VF6789, they all go in order. I don't know which is which. Do you know, Alyssa? Not a clue. <laughs> um, so let's see, can they squeeze it past? Take a look through here. Looking nice in red. Okay, very interesting. And there it goes. You can see the infotainment inside. Looking pretty close to finish. That's the VF8 reading the badge here on the back. And uh, man, cool. I know they just shipped a whole bunch of cars to the US, so we'll be seeing more VinFast stuff coming and uh, already just getting hit with so many things. Look at this Faraday Future vehicle over here, looking so much more than uh, more production intent than ye in years past. You can see the little LiDAR situation on the roof, very similar to Volvo EX90 is what that reminds me of. I heard there's one of those here as well. We should go take a look at that. I mean, just crazy stuff. Um, Alyssa, are you familiar with Faraday Future? Say what? Are you familiar with Faraday Future? Oh, I have no, I've never heard of them. Oh yeah. So what do you think of the shape of the car? It is very aerodynamic. Yeah. That's so what I'll say. <laughs> FF91, I think is what it's called. And uh, yeah, very interesting situation. Take a look at this, crazy things going on over here at Hyundai. They always have crazy futuristic ideas, flying cars, every year they go all out and it's just wild. Um, but it looks like this company, is it, what is it called? Ouster? Brought a minivan. Ouster. Ouster. Nice van. Mad it okay. out. <laughs> I guess they produce some subcomponents and things like that. Cameras almost, it looks like. There's a huge focus this year. CES has really turned into a mobility show more than any other kind of show. It's, um, you know, t turned into electric, autonomous, connected. These are all of the the uh, focuses here looking at two cadillacs in a row here at the gentex booth so blacked out escalade that looks pretty nice and then a v love these things those things rip and uh not sure what gentex does i have so much to learn you know every year you start to see the same companies and figure out how they're progressing and who's going to win and who's going to fail but one thing is for sure dc fast charging is becoming uh, a really big part of ces you would never imagine charging would be cool to put on display no, but I mean, it, the displays are just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, um, people go all out for these things without question. And um, oh, it's really, really fun to see. So you can see ZF over here, huge company, I believe German company. Uh, they brought this little pod here. Looks pretty cool. They also have an autonomous delivery truck. If you just look back over this way, mm -hmm. that looks pretty cool. And then we have a uh, Nissan Pathfinder coming through. Nice. So let's try not to get spearheaded by a fork tractor. That's cool. Um, let's squeeze on through here. Hopefully we don't piss anyone off. Get impaled. Yep, thank you. Uh, looking at this, this looks like an electric skateboard of a truck chassis perhaps or something like that. I chassis 1000, if you look over here to your left, you'll be able to see it. Yep. Looks pretty interesting to see that. And then I'm looking at this van over here that very clearly has a battery pack underneath. It has sort of an adapted front end with a sprinter rear end. If you zoom in underneath there, you'll be able to see that battery pack hanging down. So this is at the Centro booth. Also some really interesting, if you just zoom in on those two vehicles back over there, Alyssa, thank you. Those I believe are electric as well. So I don't know if they're planning on launching in the US, but we'll have to see. If we look over here, you'll see TOG. Uh, very uh, uh, up and coming, I believe, Turkish automaker. Very interesting. Here's a Centro, oh, whatever this is. This is what I want. I want the Centro this. It this looks, looks like it's ready to go into a, a war zone. baby Unimog. Yeah, baby Unimog. It's, it's got a little bit of Evum to it, doesn't yes, it? Yes, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> wow, it's called the, oh, it's called the Desert Beaver. Oh. This thing rocks. Oh man, this is cool. And it's Look got a Alcantara dashboard. Why is it so nice? Yeah, very cool. And uh, yeah, looks like it's fully battery electric as well. Seeing a battery pack under there. I Whoa, like the Desert Beaver. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, you're still checking out the Desert Beaver. I like it. You know I like this thing. <laughs> yeah, you would love to rip that thing around. Anything I can mud bog, I'm for it. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's awesome. You can just see the hustle and bustle and everyone from different companies getting everything set up. So this is still, I think, three days before the main show starts, two days. Here's the Cat 777. These things rock. You've driven that, haven't you? I've driven uh, one similar. Maybe it was the 777 that I drove. I don't remember. But uh, definitely Easy. have a review of, of an Earth Mover like this on the channel previously, which is cool. But then take a look right here. This is where it gets pretty interesting. Do you know what this is, Alyssa? No. This is the new Volvo EX90. Oh. Yes, and so uh, you can see the little LiDAR on the roof there. Oh, yeah. And you can tell by the wheels. And so that'll be really interesting to take a look at. This is, I think, the first time I've seen the production intent version in purpose or in person. I think two years away, um, 400 volt system architecture, 250 kilowatt uh, peak charging speeds, which is interesting because that's more than 500 amps. So we're going to see how public infrastructure works pretty well with that. We're trying not to get run over by the Freeman. <laughs> And then we have some really interesting things over here too. Tycon with Euro plates. Why they couldn't use one of the US cars, I don't know, but um, <laughs> it's on Stuttgart plates. It was wrapped purple earlier and yes. now it's gone black, which is very interesting. If you just take a look, we don't need to fully go down, but e-tron GT, this one's an RS e-tron GT. This is a US press car uh, or media car. And then the ID buzz in the back, um, which is great. We have a ton of ID buzz content up on the channel. Um, we've done so much with ID Buzz. It's such a great vehicle. Yeah, we've been so lucky to be able to do so much. Yeah, and I guess uh, they have some covers off the uh, Taycan. You can see it's on the Stuttgart oh, no plate, problem. and it's a VM, so it's not um, not a press car because that would be S Go. So I don't right. know what VM. Maybe vehicle marketing. Maybe. Um, if we look over here to the left, this is crazy. Underneath these lights, you can see it fully undercover or uncovered here a little bit is the Mercedes EQXX. I believe thousand kilometers of range, something like that all about long range, really cool car. Think of it a little bit like um, the Volkswagen. What was the thing that we drove? I can't remember the name of it. Why is it drawing a blank on me? Do you think I'm gonna XL1, remember? The there XL1, the XL1s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the X, this is like Mercedes XL1, but it's very expensive, very rare. Um, they had a little bit of drive opportunity for this in Germany. I unfortunately couldn't get a drive it. I would have loved to, but let's continue. Uh, EQXX is just insane, so we'll have to make maybe even a video with that. We know tonight Volkswagen is gonna unveil, or maybe it's tomorrow, but Volkswagen's gonna unveil a new car. Oh. So I can't talk about that yet, but I'm really excited to see that. And uh, we'll be there, of course. Let's see what we have here. We have analog devices with a Volvo C40 underneath it. I just wonder how many cars people rent on Turo and bring them here. I know. We saw a whole bunch of Lucids we'll take you to see as well. But here's a little C40. Um, and then here's where we're going to be working a lot this. We're going to be filming a ton of videos for you guys with experts with Magna. Uh, we love working with Magna because they are one of the powerhouses in automotive. And uh, I drove this exact truck, full battery electric, the intelligent force, dual motor, physical locking diffs, thing rocks, just an insane machine. Literally rocks. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you, they have a whole bunch of things to show here. They have um, things from their exteriors division with uh, lighting through plastics, which is a really interesting situation. So we'll be here. We'll be filming a ton, of course. Live stream coming on Friday, I believe. I'll schedule it as well so you can see ahead of time uh, what we'll be filming here at the Magna booth, but it'll be great. This looks pretty sick. I've never seen this uh, display before. This must be the intelligent force. Uh, on a platform here. They, they make the motors front and rear. You guys don't know, Magnus supplies the front motor for ID4. They do a whole bunch of different powertrain technologies. They do the torque vectoring rear diff in the Golf, a whole bunch of other stuff. This looks pretty cool. This is another ZF booth right here with a, looks like a mobility pod, probably battery electric. It seems like everything is just electric here, which is getting crazy, but I love to see all the hustle and bustle. Alyssa, what are you most excited for, for CES? I mean, this is my first time I've been to something like this. So just experiencing and meeting all these different companies and learning more about what's really going on. Yeah, BlackBerry has a Mustang Mach-E GT Performance under here. I'm looking at a sign over here that says TELUS Power Green EV Chargers. We're about to get run over, so let's just scooch over here. While we're scooching, if you point over this way, you'll see a Lucid Air. So many lucids here. Let's continue, I guess. I don't know which way to go. It just goes on and on. And so what I'm really curious actually is if our audience who's watching this video, um, if there are any specific videos you want us to make 
about whatever you're seeing here, let us know and we'll produce some content, whether it's a short or a long form Mitsubishi Electric over here, a whole bunch of power electronics and others. Looks like Garmin has their booth. Wow, crazy. What else do we have? Now we're kind of getting back into the weeds yeah. on the side of things. More we tech. Go left or right? Um, well, I'm just trying to see what car is over here. A lot of charging companies, of course. I think there's a Tesla over here. First Tesla. Of course, there's uh, the Boring Tunnel, so tons of Teslas everywhere. But this is the first one we've seen inside. And it's a uh, Model S Plaid. Very nice. From New York. So, uh, from Corning. Very cool. Let's, uh, let's continue. The electric, is this an e-bike situation? Verge? Yeah, the electric super bike. Take a look at this. Ooh, that spicy. looks insane. Holy smokes. Really cool. Wow, this is uh, insane looking motor situation here. Never seen anything set up like that. Miles. Fast charge in 35 minutes. Got a screen if you zoom in here in the center. I don't know anything about this bike, but we're definitely going to have to cover it. Zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. Okay, so Damon motorcycles, I think, is, is faster than that. Mm -hmm. And it definitely looks a bit prototype -y. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look at this little car that they're lowering down here. That's kind of cool. <coughs> Let's continue. So much to see. <laughs> and what's kind of cool is, like, um, no one's really ready to have us film their stuff yet. It's no. just setup day. <laughs> I love watching everyone's reaction. Like, why are you filming now? It's like, we're here it's to film. Quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's quiet even though they're like building a bunch of stuff. This is going to be the most quiet it's going to be. Yeah. So um, I guess what we should do is that's kind of the tour of this loop here. There's a couple more cars over here because uh, we, we strolled through with our friend Bearded Tesla guy. Is that guy. a leafy coming through? There's a uh, Mustang Mach-E over there. There's a leaf. Is there a leaf coming? Yeah, coming. What's on the roof of the leaf? <gasps> Whoa, race car coming through. Wow, I think there's a full like uh, autonomous uh, sensor suite on the roof of the leaf. And it's a new one, uh, yeah. 2023, because it's got the light up badge. There's just so much money poured into this place. It's insane. And it sprawls all over the entire city. And I, yeah, so here's the leaf. I believe there's a Lordstown over here as well. Let's go see what's going on with the leaf. Wow, that looks cool on the roof, doesn't it? Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> I love how he just parked it there. It's uh, We Ride is the name of the company. And uh, I'm not sure what they're really doing. But they got the new wheels on it, the sensors. Should we hop in and take it for a ride? It's an SV trim and it's at 91% state of charge. That actually looks really nice. Take a look at this little module on the roof. That's not um, offensive. And you have this little rear sensor on the back here as well. Hmm. One thing I always found funny is oh, the autonomous like showcase cars are always really expensive. Right. They're like uh, Waymo uses eye paces. Yeah. It's like, why? Use <laughs> leafs, use bolts. I mean, I guess Cruz use, uses bolts. Um, it's like you, they just have so much money, they just go and get, you know, from that initial funding, you just say you're going to be autonomous and you go for it. What was that, Alyssa? Free wire. Oh, yeah? Whereabouts? Right I don't there. see them. Oh, free wire booth. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Super cool. Uh, RTI connected. Oh, forklift or a cherry picker. <laughs> you got so excited. <laughs> <laughs> this one's interesting. Chevy. 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 <laughs> so I see these guys here a few years. They are, uh, I believe, South Korean making electric car charging. I actually believe they use CCS1 in South Korea as well. But uh, I've never seen any of their chargers installed in the U.S. So we should talk to these guys and be like, yeah, what, what are you doing? What you waiting for? Look at these Mercedes-Benz uh, crates over here. Super well, that's, cool. That's, that's, for CES Las Vegas, non-stackable. Yeah. You know how expensive it is to ship all of this stuff? It's just crazy. All uh, for a nerd like us to just go around and talk look about here. it. Look here, first time I've ever seen a Lordstown Endurance. That's cool looking. It's at the Meh booth, M-I-H. Meh. 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 <laughs> Meh. Um, and then there's also something next to it. I don't know what it is. Is this the Sony car? Kind of looks like this, like it, doesn't it? Oh, it's not the Sony car. It's the Indy one. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah, this is like the car for gaming nerds. But look, there's the Lordstown with hub motors. Very little clearance between the wheel and the hub motor over here. Um, that's really a interesting situation. Yeah, I forgot Indy One was a thing. They're trying to make a car into a video gaming platform. Oh. Yeah. BMW X3 over here. Wonder if it's a plug-in hybrid. It's not. Hmm. So we know they're not trying to go even a little bit electric. LiDAR companies look off to the left. Just a whole bunch of crazy things. And then, oh, Alyssa. Pacar is up here. Pacar. Pacar. Oh. Do you know what that does, no. means, is? No. Uh, Packar is uh, basically Kenworth, Peterbilt, and um, they make electric trucks, hydrogen trucks, oh. and oh, of course, m millions of diesel trucks. Right. But uh, I'm pretty sure every year they always bring some electric Class 8 semis. Oh, look, if we look over here, back to that Centro conversation, you'll see they have a DC fast charger as well uh, right there. So we really need to go over there and figure out what the heck is going on with Centro. Mm -hmm. I'd like to cover more fleet related EV topics coming forwards. I mean, it's just overwhelming because... Um, and this is just one out of 10. Well, something like that. There's a whole bunch of different wings here. So let's just squeeze through and not get run over by Freeman. There's Another little, Freeman. Little minion, minion vans. Yeah, those things are cool. We should have like a spec racing series around the uh, CES yeah. setup day. Who can get where they need to go fastest. Take a look at this, zero emissions hydrogen. They have a battery electric. This one's running, but I don't know if it's a diesel or if it's combustion hydrogen. I think it's just a diesel. Yeah, but take a look at that. That is cool. Should we go take a look at this uh, hydrogen? Now hydrogen doesn't make sense for passenger vehicles in my I, uh, impression. You and I took a road trip in a Mirai last right. year. It was interesting, it was cool, but it wasn't like, uh, you know, what we really, wanted made a ton of sense this looks like a 50 kilowatt uh, abb charger which would be like a level two charge for one of these big boys and uh yeah cool zero emissions it looks like they're applying some graphics up there for the show if you look up on the uh roof there mm -hmm. super cool let's keep going and this thing's for a diesel it's got a real quiet idle yeah it does <laughs> it's such a good looking truck i love their new designs on the peterbilts yeah. thing just looks amazing going down the road and you know what they really needed it too because yeah i like the old school peterbilts too with the lights on the front and you know big noise big fan but um these things they really needed to catch up to uh, volvo's vnl stuff and some some others as well so i think we've kind of oh here's innoviz they make lidar technology some friends of ours uh, work for them actually which is cool and Innoviz just did some partnerships with someone that I think I should remember, but I don't. And I think we're back to uh, like smaller stuff, but there is one more thing I want to show you in here, in this booth, and then we'll move on to the rest, which is a um, electric boat situation. So let's run through here. Safety last. And I got to show you this electric boat. This electric boat is really cool. I can't remember the name of it. We'll look at it here in a second. And I think it's a couple of years away. It seems pretty early prototypey, but uh, 240 kilowatt hour, 220 kilowatt hour battery pack, DC fast chargers. They want to build a network of DC fast chargers for boats, which I thought was really cool. And uh, fully inboard motors, gearbox um, on the uh, on the motors as well on the output, so you could have you know real high torque off the line. And there it is, just the shell over here. It is super duper cool. I mean, I don't know how anyone would select what LiDAR company to go with. There's gotta be 50 of them. I know. And um, interesting, look look at this. We got more DC fast charging, 60 kilowatt mobile DC fast charger, DRD U-Series I-Specs. Just so many new charging companies are popping up out of nowhere. And look, they make a level two charger over here. I think they literally, I'm pretty sure this photo, if I'm not mistaken, is from Tesla's website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they just took that. Yeah. Yep. It, it 100% just, is. Just like... ripped the photo right off yeah. the website. That's the level of charging companies that we're getting here. Um, and look, here's some more displays, and I guess they're all in these boxes. But that 60 kilowatt mobile unit looks pretty cool. I just don't know what the heck you would plug it into. Um, 
184.32 kilowatt hours. Does that mean it's got a battery pack in it? Uh, if so, we need that for range testing. Oh my God, more EV charging. Look at this, Rhombus. I think FPL uses some of their stuff. Here's one right here, actually. This is a level two station. Borg Warner Rhombus. So, uh, wow, this is very interesting. CCS connection that comes out of a post like this. How about that? Oh, wow. Super cool. I love to see it. And um, we, we got to talk to these guys too. I mean, it's just so much, but here's the boat. We're here to, to, to just get a very quick film of your boat. <laughs> so how many kilowatt hours was it again? Uh, it's about, I think it's 220. Two, 220 uh, kilowatt hour. Let me tell, I can tell it's okay, we'll, we'll do a full in-depth <laughs> thing on it. But this is Steven, he's in charge of the software. <laughs> and uh, so he's, he's got a big task ahead of him. But take a look at this, it's all liquid thermal management in here. You'll see dual motors as well inboard. Here's the battery pack down the center. So nice low center of mass. Um, you know, really, really seems pretty freaking sweet. And in Tampa. So I guess if we go review it, that means I'll have to go see my sister and say hello. <laughs> and I'm sure she'd love to go on a boat ride. So win-win yeah. for everyone. And, uh, you know, there's, we did a, a I want to go take a look at some of the other booths before we come through here. There was nothing majorly more important in this section. I think we showed you everything. There's a couple more Lucids over there. Uh, is this an Icon Bronco electric? Uh, what? At a DC, at Autel's booth? Autel, by the way, spending so much money. Oh, more chargers over here. We got to go over this way. What was I saying? We were done with everything, but we're not even close. I just saw a uh, electric motorcycle at the EcoFlow booth. Um, EcoFlow, of course, makes mobile uh, charging solutions. Another LiDAR. And so it might be a good idea for us to pick one of those things up for, uh, you know, charge uh, range testing. But of course, the Zero SRS, I've ridden this bike a ton. We've done reviews of it and this thing rocks. Um, such a cool bike, super, super fun. We do run into some thermal stuff when you drive it really hard and uh, no DC fast charging, but the bike is really freaking cool. And wow, okay, even more charging stuff. Let's finish this section off. Let's go find another section and film more because this is overwhelming. Just to give you an idea of the scale, everything you saw was just this. And then there's all of this and a ton of stuff outside throughout the city as well. So well, let's just go blast there. I mean, that was the most important for us because that's vehicle tech and advanced mobility, but there's a whole bunch of other things going on here as well. So let's just run through and uh, we'll see if there's anything interesting. We'll throw it in the video for you guys. How's that sound? Sounds like a long walk. Let's get going. And I hear BMW and Volkswagen both have huge booths this year outside. So we need to go check those out. We are now in a new orb area. We just ran into some folks uh, from ABB that we know. And uh, take a look at this thing. This is a Titan, holy crap. This is what we need, Alyssa. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How sick is this? Uh, really think, you know, we, got, we have one of those sprinters that we go around in, amateur level. We yeah. gotta go up to the Titan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe one day, I mean, I really think doing uh, some sort of crazy exploration type situation Their would be really cool. It looks a lot like Neos. It does look like Neos, That's what yeah. I thought it was. Look at this, is this a boat, a flying thing? Saucer thing? I don't know, crazy. Wow, what is this car over here? This is not really the automotive era. This is er, area, this is uh, something. But I know ABB said their charging stuff was in here. Yeah, which I found kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, you kind of get it all scattered around, which is a little bit odd. Um, but, the, you know, CES isn't just automotive, right? You get, like, iPhone cables. Yeah, we might need to pick up a few uh, chargers to get wow, through this video. Wow, strong. Beautiful looking car, not a good looking badge. No. Cool car, though. Concept, of course. You're even painting stuff in here. Uh, oh, okay. I'm just going to go around to where I see car stuff. I'm seeing EV box over here. I heard they're unveiling their new DC fast charger. Um, they invited us to their uh, thingamajiggy, but we should just skip that and then do a video with one of their I engineers. I see ABB. You see ABB? Yeah, I always recognize their font. Okay. Wonder if they have a 350 amp limitation on all units. Mm. It's just a joke. 
<laughs> yeah, I know something. Uh, he's a funny one. Okay. Uh, EV box. Let's see what they have going on over here. Blue Eddy. Portable solar panel. Blue Eddy? They've reached out to us before. Yeah, I think uh, that's why that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, look at the insides of this. Nice. Batteries. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that one. Here's EV boxes. This must be their new DC fast charger. Let's go around the other side and take a look. Oh, I see an Airstream. Sick. Watch your step here, Alyssa. Ah, oh, cool. Rear mounted cables. That's a chunky boy. That's interesting for getting cables around. Oh, side mounted cables. Oh. Ah, that makes more sense. So this must be the front of it. Okay, well, it's a box. And it's called EV Box. It's How about that? That's box. pretty sweet. Okay. We'll have to wait for that to get fully unveiled. I see a Tesla over here on Modem. I see another charging company. Oh my God, so many chargers I've never heard of, Alyssa. I know. Model 3 Performance on, no, I think it's a Model 3 dual motor with the wheels painted black and aftermarket red painted calipers. Yeah. Okay. So this is a 360 kilowatt all-in-one charger, very similar to like um, ABB Terra 360. I hope they have one of those on display. Uh, I've not heard of this. It's called a Flitway, powered by Enridge. Wow, this is the kind of stuff you see at CES. Look at the behind the wall of these video screens. Yeah. All of this. Sorry about that. We're just getting in everyone's way. Yeah, that's pretty sick, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's continue. Well, we're not able to find ABB anywhere. But that's okay, we'll have to come back. We'll film another video in the future. But uh, weird, you have digital health and some automotive with iPhone accessories in this booth. Um, yeah. Let's continue. Let's go to the next one. Take a look at this. We're now outside Google booth here. We've uh, used their navigation services before. Pretty cool, just an insane project. Volkswagen over here with a big ID7 sign on the front of it. You can't see it right now, but uh, we know they're unveiling their new car. So. I guess we can say it's the ID7 because it says it on there. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Knowledge. Public knowledge now. And uh, what is this? Inspiring mobility? Forvia? Is it a car? What? Have you ever heard of this, Alyssa? No. Okay. There's another boring loop. That's the, used to be the only loop. And now it uh, runs all the way and to the resorts another world. another one. Yeah, they're building a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. This looks pretty interesting. But uh, let's head over to Volkswagen. Over here at Volkswagen now, you can see the new ID7. You can see our friend Sofian from Redline Reviews making a video of it. And uh, yeah, looking pretty cool for sure. Definitely can't wait to hear about the specs. It's very much MEB. You can see rear drums, front discs, probably the same 78 kilowatt hour usable, 82 gross plus or minus in there. Should be a great car. Um, I'm not as excited about the ID7. What do you think, Alyssa? Not with that back. <laughs> You're not loving what the back is end. What's that? Well, what what don't you like? It looks like it's got a. It's missing something. It's missing a, its butt. It's got a bite in its butt. Okay. Well, uh, there you go. The new ID7. <laughs> Walking outside and looking at this Volvo EX90 getting towed around. How cool is that, Alyssa? That is so cool. Yeah, super neat. If I just whoops, sorry for hitting the camera. That was my fault. If you just take a look over here, you'll see a Waymo display, uh, autonomous truck from Waymo via Waymo via <laughs> Waymo. Waymo anyway I think our viewers get the idea just insane stuff going on here yeah, uh, BMW is typically just that away so I think uh, oh they set the alarm off on the ID7 <laughs> <laughs> the lights are going Rookie not mistake. not sure I'm digging the clear tail lights on that thing mm -hmm. but um, yeah lots of cool stuff going on here in Las Vegas absolutely beautiful Let's run to BMW and then we'll call it a video. How's that sound? Sounds good. This is just a preview and I really want our viewers to let us know what they want us to film in-depth videos on because we're here. We're here and I think we're going to film a ton of stuff. Yeah. This week's always crazy for us. And there goes an R1S Uber. Uber. Whoa, that's cool. Nice Uber. Nice Uber. <laughs> and we're just making our way over to BMW just over here. And then there's so much in all these halls, still plenty more, but I think we're just going to end it here because... Yeah, that's all gaming and stuff like that. Yeah, it's gaming. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Alyssa, I think we're not allowed back here, but we're going for it. They have... 
Why are Teslas at BMW? We're sneaking in. I saw a whole bunch of i7s charging. So let's go see if we can go into the back way. Sneaking around. And these are all the i7s. These must be the cars that we reviewed originally, but they have all these uh, DC fast chargers here juicing them up. That is not cheap. You have the combustion 760s over here. I think these are all the same cars from like I reviewed a few months ago or a few weeks ago. And I'm sure it's one of these right here. I should check the uh, license plate versus the car I drove, but looking good, very nice. They didn't have front plates back then, but now they do. Super duper cool. And I think that's the end of the tour of the preview for CES. We got planes taking off over there and a lot to see. Are you excited for the show, Alyssa? I am excited and overwhelmed in the same way. <laughs> yeah, it's your first CES. Yeah. So uh, audience, let us know what you wanna see. If you, if you hear of anything here that we didn't show you in this video, let us know. We'll take a look at it. And uh, there you go. Leaving you now from CES with all of the BMW i7s. See you in another Auto Spec Reviews video soon. Plenty to come from here in Las Vegas. Bye-bye.